So today we're doing one of those good old high MMR VOD reviews. Uh, the player we're spectating is Car Battery, and the match ID will also be in the video description if you guys want to check it out as well. All right, so let's begin. One thing you notice is that the enemy player immediately starts shooting at him, probably trying to get him stunned. That's actually good to remember too. And also, we see here that uh, Mr. Infernus is doing the melee for the creeps. When you melee the troopers, you do automatically confirm the souls. So that's actually really good, especially if the enemy is contesting your uh, souls a bunch. You you really don't want to actually, you really, really don't want to miss the souls because not only do you miss the soul, but the enemy gets a soul. It's a really bad. Uh, deadlock network offline. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, he's not really focused on poking the haze right now. He's kind of just purely focused on getting the souls, which is really good because he is already up on souls. He just bought something. He bought the headshot booster, which, apparent, which is really good for getting the creeps, uh, the troopers faster. Uh, because you almost entirely shoot the tro troopers' heads, right? And it's easy to do because they have such giant, easily shot heads. I mean, they're candles. So yeah, headshot boost is really, really good in terms of confirming those uh, troopers and also pushing much faster than the enemy. And the reason he got that advantage is because he was actually able to get a 100 soul lead, right? And look at his lead now. He, he is 1.1 souls 1.1k souls to 800 like that's actually insane that he's already significantly up on the haze see he says he is only now has the ammo scavenger so they're kind of they're even now in terms of items at least but the thing is he's gonna go and he's gonna come back with another item over the haze so if they were to fight right now influence would have the advantage right and he bought the Hollow point ward, which is apparently really, really strong because it gives you 80 spirit shield health. That's insane. And you also get 20% weapon damage if you're above the 6% health. I mean, you could read, right? Really good, really, really good. Right now, they're a little bit even in terms of souls again. Probably because when he left, he was able to confirm way more souls than him but he's getting ganked but the thing is he act he makes sure he flame dashes out immediately like don't hesitate like if you get ganked a 2v like in you're, you're not gonna win a 2v1 maybe you could trade 1v1 but not when you're both opponents are basically full hp right so like don't even try it but that's definitely remember a good thing to remember is never just like use your movement ability for fun unless you Absolutely know that you're not gonna get ganked. Right now, right now he bought extra regen and he bought Infuser. Infuser is really good on Infernus because you get that 20% spirit lifesteal. And you get the spirit power to make your burn do a ton more damage. Oh, various burns, really. And look at that. Now he's actually going for trades because he knows he could proc his burn on the and actually kill her really really easily and she said i don't think the haze is really expecting the fact that the burn does so much damage he used infuser there to make sure that he gets a ton more damage and also healing which is really good and now because his lane is shoved under the opponent's guardian he takes the opportunity to get some jungle camps before he goes back all right, make sure you do your jungle camps, right? Because that's just extra souls. Like, why would you not want the extra souls? Yeah, the jungle camps are definitely more of an opportunistic thing rather than something you can really do full time. At least currently. I don't. Maybe somebody's gonna come up with some way to like do jungle camps almost entirely. But if you look at the map, because it's a high MMR game, there's no no jungle camps at all. Um, I just like one. <laughs> all right, make sure you farm those jungle camps. And now the next item he bought was Soul Shredder Bullets, which again, really good on Infernus because you get that increased uh, spirit damage for your burn. And you get, Infernus loves lifesteal, by the way. That's all he's gonna be getting basically throughout this game. In, 
because in furnace eventually becomes more of like a drain tank if you know that term where like you are tanky because you have so much life steal that it's very hard to kill you if the enemy kind of boosts you down yeah again he's just focusing on the souls not really trying to poke the haze because why would you the haze is so far away you see he is trying to contest the souls as hard as possible but right now Infer like infernus is up three four point three souls compared to three point five right that's actually that's really good so far because that gives him a full I he has a full I well yeah he has an item advantage on his right now so if they were to fight he would just win also remember too that you have infinite ammo when sliding so a lot of high MMR players what they'll do is that they will slide back down the staircase when they're hitting the guardian one thing that was really good is that he actually follows up his teammate I mean even if the teammate like tower dives you know whatever but he does actually try to follow up his teammate his uh, teammate dies though and he does get his ult off at least but it is not enough yeah that tower dive was not it on a he is at like full hp you know mistakes were made all right we back up you can see there there's a ton more jungle camps back on the map you know you'll you probably see them go really quickly but like, he's very aware right now that his team is fighting he didn't just like randomly go for creeps and they get a kill well at least they trade one for one and you notice too how he uses like one bullet to collect his souls rather than like you know spam shoot shooting like 10 just to get one soul like don't do that make sure your aim is on point before you get the soul because you need ammo at all times you never know when somebody's gonna just like jump on top of you I mean, map awareness will definitely help with that, but you know, it's kind of hard to be perfectly map aware at all times. Right now, he has the Mystic Vulnerability item as well. Once again, just really good for your boon. And you're always going to be proccing it, right? Because in Furnace, you always want to trade when you know you could get your boon off. He also has the Duration Extender, again, for his passive. It's all about that, that passive at the end of the day on in Furnace. Ooh, he does get slept here. Mm. Now he uses his movement ability to push the wave really quickly. I wonder why he does that. Oh, he does know that the he does know that the dynamo has just backed, right? At the end. So that's probably why he did it. Again, map, map awareness is really, really critical in this game. Any in any MOBA really, but especially because you don't have a top-down camera in this game like you really really need to be looking at that map I like every i'll say every three seconds just look at the map uh and this is a good example of why you need to look at the map but he does follow up on his teammate again right don't just like run away he does fully commit right here he knows he's gonna come around the corner right like Obviously, he fully commits, make sure he, because he, he can't run away. He knows he can't run away, and they trade, they trade two for two in a 3v2. That's really good, because you just alleviated a bunch of pressure from the map. And pressure, I'm just, when you say, pre when I say pressure, I just mean in terms of, like, nobody's now pushing the wave that would have otherwise been pushed by that third player, which is really good. That allows his teammates to maybe jungle when they otherwise couldn't, or to push their waves when they might be scared of being ganked. This dynamo is all over the map, by the way. This dynamo is 633 right now. This dynamo is just putting in the work. Um, really good by him as well. Now he immediately goes for the dynamo because he knows that his teammates are here. That dynamo was out of position, like clearly. Like you should not be there. And this he just gets tower dive because, well, what is she supposed to do, really? And just like that, they get the guardian, right? Grouping up is so important. One thing I realized in my games, because I'm so relatively new to the game although i have a good amount of knowledge so far is that you need to group with your teammates and ooh, that was such a good hook he's just dead that hook is like borderline impossible to dodge by the way it comes out so quickly i, I honestly feel like the bebop hook needs to have like a louder sound and also probably not travel that fast and have it has such a long range it travels so fast and you don't really hear it over the sounds of other things you could kind of look out for it if you maybe you're just leaning but if you have a bunch of stuff going on you're shooting the walker like you're not gonna hear that shit. i can tell you that now 
And again, map awareness here gets the talent kill because he immediately just goes for the talent because he sees his teammate and he's able to take the zip line straight to that kill. Really nice. And you see right now, Infernus is up 3,000 souls on the Hears. So in a 1v1, Infernus is way more likely to win. Again, this gets his burn off. That's going to do like half of that guy's HP. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, he is really, really fed. And the reason it does like half of his HP is because he has toxic bullets. He has soul shredder bullets. They both just give you amplified damage as well as percent max HP damage. But the reason they were able to dive under that walker, by the way, is because they had a trooper wave underneath there. If they didn't have a trooper wave, then the walker would be focusing the players, right? Make sure and if you're diving, you at least have a wave or else you're just going to die really silly. So that Lash is just dead. Make sure and follow up on the on your teammates, right? Again, don't just like leave them to just, you know, hang around and die. And one thing it is, diving people um, under objectives in this game is actually really easy. Like they didn't even really need to be that worried about the walker. I think Valve is going to have to change that. Because right now you could kind of just like ignore objectives. Um, at least not in mid game. Not we're in mid game at this point. N definitely not in the early game because you don't have enough damage yet. Yep. And he gets that large camp because Infernus is really good at doing camps. There's nothing for him to do, right? Both lanes are shoved, at least on his side of the map. So what is he supposed to do? Don't like run around doing nothing. Do do your jungle camps. And a little tip too that I've noticed from this game as well is uh, if you proc your burn with Infernus using your bullets first and then you do your flame dash, then the flame dash will extend your passive, right? And that, it says here, your bullets will, burn, will build up to apply a burning effect on enemies and Infernus's bullets and abilities refresh your duration. So you actually want to have the burn going first and then use your abilities if possible because then your ability will just prolong your burn and then you could do large jungle camps really quickly as in furnace. So that was a really good move by him. He did have the problem of having like 1400 unsecured souls but he went and bought crippling headshot. Cripple I've never bought crippling headshot on Infernus. Maybe I should because headshots reduce the tar target's bullet and spirit resist and that is a significant reduction. By the way, that is so much more damage and you get things that Infernus likes, which is Bullet and Spirit Lifesteal. Really good purchase. I'm going to try this build as well. But yeah, you don't want to be pushing when you have a ton of unsecured souls, because when you die, if he had died with 1400 unsecured souls, that's just a ton of resources wasted, right? And this Talon did not know that he was about to die so easily. And again, that is because of the crippling headshot, for sure. You just lose so much Spirit Resist, <laughs> like, there's nothing you could do. He has duration extender, like the burn lasts for almost five seconds and probably way more because you're constantly going to be procking it as well. Um, yeah, he is really, really ahead and he wasn't even that far off in terms of souls compared to the talent, like 17 versus 14. It's not like he had 20 versus 14, but I mean, he did have his teammate to put a little bit of damage as well, but still. That was actually an insane amount of damage. Right here, he kind of finds himself out of position, so he very quickly dies. That's the thing about Infernus, too, is that, like, if you get CC'd, you will just die. The dynamo knocks him up, so, like, what are you supposed to do, really? You can't run away with Flame Dash if you're floating in the air. Right here, he, he immediately rotates to this fight. Because, of course, like, you see your teammates fighting and it's an easy way to, like, gang up on the opponents. Make sure I take the opportunity, right? Like, don't... Oh, the yellow lane and the purple lanes are both shoved. There's no reason to go to them at this point. If anything, the enemy is going to have to collect those waves or lose a ton of souls. So you have pressure to do stuff like go to mid, right? And you can see that their teammates are, in fact, like, you know, pinging mid. The problem is that they don't seem to want to do it. Like, he hasn't committed to going mid yet. Uh, probably because he had a ton of souls to purchase things. So he went and he bought Fleet Footwork. That was a 
Fleet Foot Work I also have never bought one in Funas, but it seems really nice because you can shoot and strafe really easily. Uh, I should try this as well, and you get temporary ammo with the active as well. Remember that the actives in this game are really, really, really good. You should be buying actives as much as possible if they fit into the build that you're going for. He's clearly going for a you cannot catch my ass build, so make sure I get that done. Yep, just taking an opportunity to get a large jungle camp. Again, just like making sure the burn is going on all three of the monsters at the same time. Very nice, very nice. And look at that, he just leaves the large camp with full HP because he has so much lifesteal. He does have the problem of having 1100 unsecured souls. He's pro he might try to buy, but the more important thing is to just stay safe. Like, I don't see don't die for the unsecured souls, you're fine. But I do think that enemies can't see this little orb on you. So they know that you're running around with unsecured souls and they'll make you a juicier target. Um, I kind of wish there was a different way to see it. It's just very odd how you just have like a ball running floating behind you. But he's just doing objectives around the map, right? Like the little tiny objectives. But the reason he doesn't get the Sin of Sacrifice machine is because he sees an opportunity to gank these people. That that he is just dead. <laughs> that right there was map awareness, by the way. And not only that, the Bebop just wasted his Hyper Beam. He waits out the Hyper Beam first because why would he go in on a Bebop with Hyper Beam going? And Bebop is just dead now. He, just, he knows that he's just hiding in some corner and well... He found him. Yeah, that was that was like a perfect example of map awareness and just being 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 aware of like what your teammates are doing and like when an opportunity arises. And now he gets to farm for free because two of them are dead. You see here his teammates are taking a fight where like they had a numbers disadvantage. So they died, unfortunately. Now, is he going to just jump on the haze? He doesn't jump on the haze. Why does he not jump on the haze? Well, the reason being is that his Kelvin was going after the Paradox. But now the haze, the haze is out of position, right? The haze doesn't, is unaware that like she's just going to die. And that's the case for this haze this entire match. Like They don't seem aware of like when they can farm safely. Maybe it would have been better for this haze to be doing jungle camps because then they wouldn't have died, right? Now, he does have Veal Walker. Which is unfortunate because he just wasted the passive a little bit. But Veil Walker is really good for Infernus because you could push. And as long as you don't get caught out by CC, you could kind of just run away no matter what. So you see here that Paradox catches him. And Paradox is an assassin. So he almost died. But Veil Walker saved his ass just now. You see, now that he's aware that his teammates are... Here to help him he tries to go back in but he doesn't get his off alt off in time but the paradox still dies now his teammates are in a numbers disadvantage fight you can see there's four of them versus two so they are gonna die unfortunately but they have abrams and viscous coming in let's actually see how this goes so we see that they're doing the mid boss right now why are they doing the mid-boss? Because all of their lanes are shoved, right? That's really good because they have so much pressure on the map that they could afford to do the mid-boss, which is real. That's, that's a good time to do the mid-boss. <clears throat> Definitely don't attempt the mid-boss if, you know, you're one dot player down and a bunch of the lanes are shoved towards your objectives because you're probably just going to have the entire team rotate on you guys and you're going to die. And you're going to lose a bunch of objectives at the same time. You need to make sure that you have pressure on the map first via your waves crashing into the enemy's uh, objectives. Right? He takes the opportunity to get a walker because his entire team is here. Why would he not take the objectives? And you see, right now, they're pushing the enemy base hard. Why? Because four of them are dead. Now is not the time to rotate to some other lane just to farm 
for no reason, right? Like you have the opportunity to siege the enemy base and that is what they're doing. Make sure and group up. Don't a lot of people just like leave at this point. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know why. But you see right now too, they're not just like killing the objectives. They're in actually focusing the players first. Is a mistake I see in a lot of my games and also I do a lot is that like I will focus up the objectives over the enemy and then we will just get wiped. Don't do that. Kill the enemy first because what was that? Why did that window just spawn? <laughs> that was really odd. But yeah, he's helping his teammates here. He doesn't sit in the haze out for too long. Thank God. Because haze could take you from full to zero in a nanosecond, it feels like. <clears throat> Especially because she dodges half the bullets. With her ult. See here. It says here. Yeah. Evasion ch chance 50%. Yeah. So he's actually a lot tankier in her ult than you would uh, think, just because of that. Yep, four of the enemy team is now dead, so they're free to actually hit the Petra now. That would not have happened if they tried to keep the enemy alive. And look at that. They all, as soon as one of them respawns, they all just jump on the enemy. And the, re and the thing is, they're, they're staggered, right? So, like, they're always at a disadvantage. Really, really, really good macro play by the Amber Hand, which is our team. And then this murder alt by seven, where like he's just in the middle there, you know, being shocked. And look at that, they're dead. And they win. That was actually a really good game. Please don't play Paradox. I didn't realize racists cannot use swap. What? I think they were having a little bit of a um, toxicity issue there. But yeah, look at that. Car battery did an insane amount of damage and also farmed the best on his team by far and also got a ton of assists, got a ton of kills. That was really nice to see. He didn't do heal the most. The, the most that was healing, the most healing was uh, Kelvin, which makes sense. Um, Kelvin has healing in his kit. Yeah, so make sure to like this video if you liked it. Uh, subscribe for some more Deadlock content, which, you know, we can't publish yet. But, you know, I'm still I'm just enjoying this game so much that I don't even really care that I can't publish the videos. I kind of enjoy making the videos just for the sake of them. And yeah, here's the build. Uh, really good. I'm going to try this build out myself on Funas and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right. So you guys take care.